Hello everyone, in today's video we're going to be showing the latest project I've been working on in Archean, recreating a legendary piece of navigation equipment, the Delco Carousel 4. And now this has been one heck of a fun project, not nearly as intimidating as some of the other things, but I learned a lot about Haversign in the process. So what this unit here is, is basically an all-in-one navigational system. In the old days this used to be a gyro-based system. In our example, we're actually linked up to our lovely little nav computer here in the back to kind of help us out with some of the, um, you know, latitude, longitude, heading, things like that. But we do all the math here, and it's a pretty neat little unit. So to get us started, I'm going to go ahead and flip this over to standby here. And uh, one of the cool things is, is after I do that, you have all these different modes available to you. And I tried to do the best I could to kind of I'll explain them briefly here. Those of you familiar with the original unit, um, you know exactly what we're looking at here, and you kind of know what button does what already. Basically, what you have is you have your waypoint mode to say what waypoint you have currently stored in memory. And we have a total of nine waypoints we can store in memory, waypoint zero being your starting position, in which case we're about one degree south, about 153 east here. Now, if I wanted to create a waypoint inside of my system, all I have to do is swing this thing over to the waypoint I want to create and then dial in the values. For example, let's say I wanted to go to a one north instead of one east here, or one south, I should say. I'm going to press the insert key. I'm going to start by pressing N, and I'm simply going to dial it in with the decimal. So if I want one degree north, that's going to be 1.0, enter. Now east, I'm just going to press the E key here and do 1530, or 153. And when I press insert, it will do all the fancy math for you and basically pop that into our system. Now, what's so cool about here is you can store up to nine of these waypoints. And if we want to pick which course we're using to get to it, we simply press the waypoint change button and then select what waypoints we're going between. In this case, between waypoint two and three, if I press waypoint change again and I come down to zero, it puts us down on waypoint zero through one, just like you have here. Now, I notice you're noticing this little knob up here that lets me kind of dial mode. This really doesn't do anything other than simulate kind of what the original unit does. Uh, for example, I can come down here to status. And again, I'm just pressing F over on the side of the circle and I can snap it to a line. The little green light comes on to tell me it's ready and I snap it to the nav button and it's ready to go. After you've dialed in a waypoint, you've selected uh, what legs you want to go from. In this case, we're going from where we are now to uh, where we want to go here. It will go ahead and fill in all the rest of these commands. For example, if I pop this to this, it'll tell me that it is 223 kilometers away and that it is going to take me 142 minutes to get there. Obviously, this is a very large number. This number will get much, much, much smaller in the event that uh, we're actually moving, for example. Our wind page shows nothing. There's no wind yet. If I go over to my POS page, this will tell me exactly where I am right now. If I go to my cross track, you can say that I've got no error as far as left and right of my course. That makes sense since I'm starting here, but it can tell me that I'm 34 degrees off to the left there. we got to fix that. If I want to see this, I can see what my current heading is. Of course, we can also see our ground speed. And you can see, again, that's going to be my course. That's going to be my actual heading. Now, the reason this is so darn diddly useful here is uh, let's go in a slightly closer location here. I'll go to waypoint. I'll go ahead and press insert. I'm on waypoint one. We're going to do uh, south uh, one degree. And don't forget the decimal point. And of course, these are all decimals. So uh, east, uh, 1530. I'm going to go ahead and press the insert key just like that. This is now locked in. If I go to distance, it's only 16 kilometers away. So it's a pretty darn short flight for us. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pop this over to cross track real quick. I'm going to jump in the seat. Uh, this thing has uh, got a little bit of a torque problem. So um, you'll have to bear with me as far as the uh, god awful flying here. But you can see here as I swing myself over in this direction, I'm starting to get progressively closer to being at the correct course. So again, I'll just kind of swing around, get a little bit more throttle. This thing's up quite fast. <laughs> again, this is one of my early experimental units. Ah, there we go. Cool. So this is uh, the direction we're heading in. As you can see there, my cross track air is very twitchy. You can see I've got about a 0.2 uh, kilometer off course here. Not too bad. You can see my correction. I need to come to my left just a little bit, give it a little bit of rudder. Now, the wild thing here is if I switch this to distance, you can see that I'm 14 kilometers away now, and I am uh, two minutes away, well, 1.9 minutes away from this particular destination. So you can see how incredibly useful this is for the purposes of navigating and basically wandering around the incredible world. Of course, I can go to the position page, and you can watch as my position, you know, dynamically updates. The south and the east all work. Like I say, everything is uh, pretty darn dynamic in this particular unit. We can go down to headings so we can see what our actual heading is. We can come here and see what our actual course is. And that also gives you a good idea what my ground speed is. Uh, the rest of this display doesn't work. Uh, this thing is a very, very ancient model that was basically for the purposes of uh, just seeing if I could fly around and do like fly-by-wire and stuff, but it works. So as you can see, this is a complete unit. Uh, if you want to go download that over in the workshop, you've got the link below if you want to kind of play with it. Uh, the big thing is I'm not going to pretend I'm the world's great God's gift to coding or anything like that. I just wanted to create something that was fun, that, that kind of works, and I really enjoy it. What I intend to do with it next, of course, is I want to experiment a little more with the design. And I would love to have a little HSI instrument so you could like follow the little needles and pretend you're an instrument pilot. 
And of course, my ultimate goal with all of this is I have to create a system that's a little bit more useful where you could actually do like instrument approaches and stuff like that. But that is for another day. Enjoy.